Hello, my name is Prime, and welcome back to ATS Showcases. Yes, it has been quite some time since I've put out an episode, and a lot of things have happened here in ATS, including what we are driving today. So I will be doing my very first look at the brand new Gen 5 Freightliner Cascadia that has been added to the game, along with the launch in real life, an evolution of one of the most popular highway trucks out there, and it does not disappoint. The brand new Gen 5 Cascadia comes in as technically a brand new truck for American Truck Simulator, as the 2019 version, or the previous version here in ATS is still available for you to purchase. However, the brand new one, which we're talking about today, comes in four different cabin options. The day cab, the 48 inch sleeper, the 72 inch sleeper in the XT trim, and then the 72 inch sleeper in the RR trim, which I'm using today. In terms of chassis, there is a long list of options here, obviously highly dependent on the cabin option you select. Generally speaking, there are a couple options for each cabin type for you to choose from. In terms of the engines, there are a couple DD13s and then the DD15 Detroit engines that are available, ranging from 370 horsepower up to 525. In terms of transportation, Transmissions, there's a few options ranging from Detroit, Eaton, and Allison. We have two interior trims, the slate gray and the saddle tan. In terms of colors, there are plenty of standardized paint colors, both in the more matte finish and the metallic finishes as well that we know and love with Freightliner. But there are also a few new paint schemes that come in with the truck that if you go to the little gear, you'll be able to see aftermarket part DLC Freightliner Cascadia fifth generation. Now, in terms of the exterior accessories, now, depending on the trim level that you choose, there may be some more options than not. However, generally speaking, the options are pretty good, but there are quite a few dots where you only have one or two options, or for that matter, there may only be one option, for example, the hood. Now, it's interesting that, say, the hood actually has an option, which maybe is something that will come further down the line, or for example, like the lights. Is this room for a tuning pack? I do not know, but keep in mind that some of these dots you can't really do a whole lot with. And generally speaking, as you go around the truck, it's the standard and then paint option with the exception of the mirrors where, of course, you have standard and elite, which is another trim level, which brings in some chrome. But then we also have the addition of brand new cameras. So similar to the next gen T680, this fifth gen Cascadia features not just the standard mirrors, but then also the cameras that go along with it. And this beautiful display here shows off that camera in full force. But otherwise, as you move around the truck, it's generally speaking the arrow trims that you can customize, changing, say, door handles from the standard to elite package trim, changing out how the arrow kit is at the back. If you don't want any form of arrow kit, if you want the standard arrow X for Freightliner, or if you happen to want to use the flow below kits. Now for the interior, you can, of course, select your steering wheels. There's also a GPS located just to the right hand side of the camera di display screen, if you happen to have that or just by the A pillar. However, as far as I know, every single Freightliner Cascadia 5th gen happens to have a nice big GPS screen here. So I'm not quite sure why you need to use that, but I guess to each their own. And in moving around the cabin, you can, of course, add some different accessories all around. But may I just say this is an absolutely beautiful interior uh, of the Freightliner Cascadias and the detail is immaculate. Uh, even down to say the uh, the high quality switches on the side of the seats for the air adjustments uh, or for the seat adjustments themselves. It's just incredible to see the level of detail around this cab and SES software has done a wonderful job. Now you may notice that there's an extra little screen up here or at least what looks like a screen and you would be correct that is a screen and that is for your side mirror over here. So if you select the mirrors with the camera system enabled you automatically get this extra screen up at the top which gives you a display of the side of the truck pointing basically straight down by the door. So overall, it is a fantastic truck and one that I'm sure a lot of you will be upgrading if you haven't done so already because I'm a little late to the party. But besides my delay in release, we are going to be hauling some household appliances from down here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, all the way up to Springdale, Arkansas cutting across the state, primarily going across the 40 and the 49 as well. Really, we're just going across some of the main interstates here in Arkansas as a Freightliner Cascadia is a highway cruiser at heart. And I decided to customize this with a nice white paint job and a lot of the black elements, which I think make the truck look really good. And also the more shadow rims as well. I think the overall pairing of this delivery in terms of truck and trailer is quite nice. So without further ado, let's get this fifth gen Cascadia started up and get on the road.
what you are hearing and seeing today is fully American Truck Simulator. I have no mods activated in this profile, so the DD15 Detroit engine sounds you hear today is just what you can expect in default American Truck Simulator with this Gen 5 Cascadia. All right, so just before we roll out, let's look at the cab more in action here. Uh, obviously, all the detail of the wonderful cab here, all the buttons, the massive GPS screen, uh, your big center display here with a bunch of customization and different pages that we can go through. Um, but the camera and mirror galore. I mean, so far performance has been good. So there's the side view camera because I have the camera kit enabled. We have two duplicated mirrors over there and we also have a couple mirrors over here. So we are well and truly set here, friends, uh, for the delivery. And hopefully I shouldn't be able to, I shouldn't crash into every, anyone. Uh, that's maybe a bit of a knock on wood situation given my history. Uh, but let's go ahead and roll out of here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. I certainly am. It is fantastic to be back here in America truck simulator and it has been a long time my friends i mean i think it's been about a month now since i've actually put out a showcase of any sort um and i think only like a prime news or so in between it has been chaotic maybe i'll talk about this if we get time near the end of this video or maybe in another episode to come we'll see but regardless um we're back <laughs> that's all that matters and there is a lot to talk about where do I start? That's the big question, uh, because there's been plenty of news. News that, honestly, I haven't been able to cover as well because of things that have been going on, which, once again, I'll maybe talk today, maybe not. Um, a lot of things have happened. Um, and I do apologize for letting some of you down, maybe who follow the channel more uh, for the news, because you may have missed out on some stuff if you haven't let your game update, uh, given uh, just the, well, uh, lack of reporting on my end. But... I'm going to tell you all about the stuff that we've missed today. So starting off, I guess this is where we'll start off uh, more in a uh, chronological order to a certain degree, uh, is the confirmation of the Louisiana DLC for American Truck Simulator. Now, this was something we were kind of expecting, and I did do a Prime News, one of the last ones before I kind of went on a bit of a hiatus um, on Louisiana. Uh, well, at least it was the teaser for Louisiana, which was quite explicit that was Louisiana because it was swamp and iconic bridges that go across swamps. <laughs> so it was pretty cut and dry. And I know like everyone on, on, on the comments, as far as I know, said, yep, 100% Louisiana. And of course, the, the route number as well uh, in the cab had the, the interstate number. So pretty clear that it was Louisiana on that front. But... Officially confirmed now that Louisiana is now in the pipeline. So it goes Missouri, Iowa, then Louisiana as we know it, uh, which is very, very exciting for American Truck Simulator. Plenty of things to come in terms of maps and hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll come a little bit faster given that they are smaller DLCs in general, uh, which I think a lot of us would hope that that will be the case because, well, there are smaller states. Hopefully we can get more of them frequently because we're getting to the eastern side and it's going to take a long time if we're dealing with individual state releases that take many, many months uh, to do, which fair, that can happen. But still, I'd like to see them come a bit more frequently. I think you would as well. And I'm sure SDS Software wants to release them more frequently as well, or if not in bundles, which I'm still saying would be a good thing to do as we move east. But that's just my two cents there. Louisiana is coming, though. That's the very exciting thing there. Over the last, well, number of weeks, we've had a few blog posts on the Missouri DLC highlighting a few towns uh, along the way. Uh, feel free to check out the blog post uh, page for SEO Software if you wish to learn more about them. Or if you happen to own the game, check out your Steam uh, basically info bar at the top if you have that enabled uh, when you're in your library. There should be some of the most recent news for the various games you own, uh, take a scroll through there because if all else fails, if you don't want to look at the blog post or if I haven't put out a prime news video or any form of post on it, feel free to check out there because that at least gives you, a, well, the same thing as the blog post more or less, but just in uh, the Steam format uh, to be able to look about what's kind of, what's the news coming up here uh, for American Truck Simulator. We've had a few, obviously, on Missouri. I don't believe we've had much on Iowa. I think we may have had one. Um, honestly, it's kind of hard for me to remember. I did have a bit of a list just kind of in general numbers, uh, but it's kind of hard to say because I didn't actually do the Prime News on them, and I almost didn't even have the time to even take a look at them, uh, which is bad, bad of me to say. Uh, but it's the way it is. 
happening and that's fine but we did have a few on missouri which is good because it seem it's seemingly ramping up fingers crossed it comes sooner than later maybe by the end of this year that may be a long shot i don't know maybe that's just uh the the ats fanboy and be coming out wanting another dlc being a little bit greedy but i'd like to see it uh come out uh, sooner than later and i think you would all agree and for the very first time since I've started covering updates and, well, anything here on American Trucks Mud on the channel, since, well, the creation of the channel, I missed an update. I completely missed the 1.52 update, which I am running on today. And if you have American Trucks Millator updated, and in fact, if you're running the Freightliner Cascadia Gen 5, you are most likely running the 1.52 update. Now, this update was kind of weird in a sense because it... Was, it didn't go through the same beta period. It wasn't really a major feature packed, but it was still significant in its own right. That is because it brought in, or the 1.52 update was the Driving Academy, along with maybe a few minor touches here and there. Um, it was the Driving Academy. So now that's in American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator 2, respectively. And that is a great addition for both games in some of you may remember a long time ago the Scania truck driving simulator uh, for well uh, that was a dedicated game that SCA software did well many years ago it essentially has made a customized and major overhaul oh we gotta get over here we are not exiting at 9th street um, <laughs> it, it's basically made a return to Euro Truck Simulator 2 in a, um, a well, obviously major updated uh, fashion and then the American Truck Simulator version is now just all integrated into the game, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna have some fun with that. Maybe I don't know. Is that something that I bring back a stream for? And we try and go through, or I try and go through all the things. I don't know. Comment down below what you think about that. I think that could be cool. Um, the Driving Academy is definitely something that will be expanded in the future as well. Brand new scenarios and uh, different things like that. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that develops. But uh, overall, it's uh, that that was a 1.52 update. But, in then quick succession, now it hasn't been confirmed for ATS as of recording this video, however on the ETS2 side, we've just had the open beta release for 1.53. So then that leads into what is coming for 1.53 in ATS. Well, I'm going to assume that the next phase of the California Rework project is included within that update. Now, once again, this is uh, me recording this before any form of open beta or confirmation of what's coming in 1.53. And we've actually got to get over it because we're going to Fort Smith. Look at me. I'm trying to multitask here with all the, get, get the rest off on the commentary and focusing on driving. And I've nearly missed my exit or exited the wrong exit or taken the wrong exit. There we go. Not exited the wrong exit. And... Uh, Nearly missed my exit, all in a couple interchanges. So look at me go, typical Prime, back at it again. Uh, that that bit has not left whatsoever. Anyways, uh, where was it going with uh, the conversation previously? Uh, we were talking about oh yeah, 1.53. So I'm assuming that the California rework project, the what is phase five, I guess now, or is it four? I think it's four or five. Um, I'm assuming that will be part of 1.53, and I do believe a long time ago a blog post that I believe I covered, but I'm just forgetting because it's been so long, uh, mentioned that it would be coming in the 1.53 update. But we were just kind of shocked that it just mentioned that out of the blue. But now, really, I shouldn't be too surprised given uh, how the up or the the update schedule has been because 1.51 came, well, I guess the beta and kind of release was early mid August. That was the 1.51 update. We had 1.52 only a couple weeks ago now, I guess, because it happened in the midst of my bit of a break. Um, and now we're here on, on the doorstep of 1.53. This has been a chaotic situation for uh, updates, that's for sure. Uh, and I guess with 1.52 not being a full-fledged update, I know some of you are going to get mad with me saying that, but it's not the same as, say, 1.53 where there's the rework, there's various bug or new additions. I guess I'm big fixes, but it was really just the Driving Academy that brought it in, so I guess it's a different thing. But yeah, 1.53 is now on the doorstep. What will it include? We don't really know as of recording this video, but I'm assuming California rework, that's just the next logical thing. And is it a precursor for, say, Missouri? I don't know. Comment down below what you think. Um, the timing of and how the blog posts are going with Missouri now and the frequency, it is a possibility. 
I don't know. Uh, maybe we're reaching ahead of ourselves a little bit there, but that's okay. That's uh, that's part of it. No, I guess I should say it was 1.52. Now, I guess it was kind of a separate update in its own sense, but the truck we're driving today was the Freightliner Cascadia 5th Gen. Honestly, I'm just really nice, or happy to see technically a new truck into the game, and in fact, it launched uh, in the game at the same time as it unveiled in real life, I do believe, if I'm getting that information correct, which is very unique and obviously keeps the door open for so many new things in the future, and it's very exciting for American Truck Simulator because it just shows the relationship AT or SES Software has with the various uh, truck manufacturing companies uh, on both sides of the pond for Euro Truck Simulator 2 and ATS. So that's good because that means that as new trucks come that we can obviously, well, uh, get them in the game at the same time uh, as they're being released in real life. But at the same time, I was not expecting this whatsoever because we just had the release of the, um, well, just, just had the release of the uh, Mac Pinnacle. There we go. Uh, nearly lost the name of it. Um, well, I guess that was the other thing. 1.1. 5 one kind of was yeah beta august and then then the arkansas dlc released into september but anyways um i was not expecting the mac pinnacle and then this brand new cascadia to come in quite quick succession obviously the mac pinnacle is by and by and large not a new truck in real life it is actually one of the most legendary mac trucks ever i'll just put it at that um you can argue with me on that if you uh, wish to and i think there's an accident up here so we're gonna get over use the handy dandy mirrors uh, you can go ahead of truck. I'll be courteous to you. Mustang, don't do it. Thank you. Oh, they got a car blocked in. Not good. <laughs> Not good at all. Uh, and it looks like we've got an exit here, so we'll go in behind the container truck here. Because um, we're going to Freightville. Uh, but... Yeah, I was not expecting this new truck. I don't think a lot of people were, uh, unless if you're expecting it, knowing that it may be releasing in real life and the potential of it coming uh, to America Truck Simulator at the same time. That's to each their own, but I wasn't expecting it, that's for sure, and I don't know a whole lot of people were, but I'm happy to have it. Again, it's an evolution of the 2019. It is a fifth gen, so it is kind of all new in some sense, but it's also kind of not in many respects. Uh, but as far as I know, there's some more customization coming for it. We'll have to see. But on the truck sense, and I think I've gone through most of the stuff. Well, I mean, there's actually a couple other things, but I'll talk about that in a second. But I want to talk on this thing with the truck side. When is the rest of the T680 coming? Um, so for those who don't know, the T680 Next Gen uh, came in as a special edition. Now, unless if I completely miss something, uh, and I haven't noticed it, I don't think, we still don't have the, you know, day cab, mid-roof sleeper, etc. versions and more customization on the T680 Next Gen. It came in as a special edition truck, uh, kind of as an anniversary thing, but not the rest of it. And the rest of it was said to be coming whatever it's going to be here soon. Um, we're now <laughs> we're, we're, we're now into fall, at least as of recording this video, and we still don't have uh, the rest of the T680 Next Gen. So that's interesting to say the least i don't know what happened there um i again this is just me saying that unless if i have absolutely made a fool of myself here and completely overlooked the the kind of integration of it uh, which i feel like su software wouldn't just kind of put that out there without without making it more known i don't know maybe that's just uh me thinking about like the the PR standpoint, but you'd think they'd make a blog post and not just say, oh yeah, here we go, the day cab and stuff is actually in here, but we don't, you know, say anything about it. I feel like that's a feature they'd want to market. Anywho, it still begs the question, when is that coming? And then what are other trucks coming down the line for ATS as well? Um, oh, there we go. We've got Freightville discovered. And with that, um, I've actually got uh, the Steam Achievement for Arkansas, which is quite nice. I don't mind that at all. I don't mind my achievements. But no, it's interesting when it comes to trucks because there's so many options that could be coming to ATS and so many historical ones and, of course, newer ones uh, in different styles as well that it models that really should be coming. And that also leads into Peterbilt. When is that rework happening? When is the rest of the, well, some of the other trucks in ATS as well being reworked, the older ones? 
I don't know. It's just the way it is. We'll have to wait it out, I guess. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We're passing by Springdale, which is good. We're kind of, go well, we are going completely across the state today, which is nice exploring some different areas and the areas that we haven't actually been to yet in Arkansas, which is quite nice. Now, in terms of, I guess, the couple other things that um, are going on here, uh, the Pink Toper event is active um, as well. So for those who happen to own uh, or, or the Pinktober is a thing. Um, and I guess they're really done now as of recording this video. That's bad of me. Uh, but it, it is a thing uh, for the for the, any, any of you who happen to own uh, the Pinktober uh, charity uh, paint job pack. Help support uh, cancer research and so on. Very, very nice thing to do. And I will apologize. I was not able to do it this year. Just not able to do it this year. I normally tried to do that ever since I picked that up and it's just kind of started uh, with me doing coverage on the, the games, but wasn't able to do it. That's that's on me. I do apologize. Um, but otherwise, there's also uh, the Halloween event now. <laughs> Transitioning completely. Uh, we now have the Happy Halloween or the Halloween um, event going on, which is nice as well so if you happen to have your world of trucks account connected to your game you can use uh the external market and find your treats uh, or find the halloween treats that you need to haul around and go from there all right um uh, wait did I, did I actually have to select this oh i need to select my delivery because uh on the last video if you didn't see it and we're gonna do the where do you need it um which is the higher one. I forgot to change my settings back uh, to the always park it where do you need it. Uh, so the last episode was the, I think it was the dynamically hauling logs. And a good tip for anyone who wants to use the dynamic loading and unloading feature is to uh, make sure you always select the delivery point uh, and how you do it. Because depending on the cargo type, it may be where do you need it, which is the highest level. Um, or the hardest one where you got to park the trailer exactly well where they need it um but then some of the delivery types don't because it's just the middle tier where it's let's make it easy because you're just driving say over a grain or like a hopper and i think the grain hopper trailers for the unload that has always been the culprit for me and i do appreciate those who pointed it out or at least tried to help me out with it um i do believe Part of the problem I always had was I've, I mean, I've for many years now, I've, I've had um, my parking set to skilled by default, so I don't even have to select anything. But with the grain hopper trailers, when you're unloading them, technically the unloading points generally aren't that hard because you're just, well, you're going over a hopper. So it's generally straight in, straight out, that's all. So in the first look and other deliveries I've done with it, I've never been able to do that. But as soon as I turn that off, it then also says which one is the dynamic load and unload. I'm not very centered here, but there's plenty of space around, uh, so that's fine. Um, uh, oh, very, what kind of exterior is that cinematic? I don't know. Something weird. Um, as soon as you basically select your delivery point, you can then make uh, confirm, basically, that you're going to be able to dynamically unload, which is absolutely fantastic and one uh, uh, tip that I highly recommend you do, and thank you to those who recommended it to me. But today I just forgot to sit, uh, set that back, so I'm sure I'll do that for next episode. Considering the standard deliveries, I really don't need to choose it. I just try and park it where I can, and even in something that's nice and open like this, I still can't manage to park it in the center. But regardless, it's great to be back here in ATS. I have been recording some videos as well um, for those who are watching to the end to try and make sure that moving forward, uh, we can try and at least keep videos uh, at a little bit better interval than what has just happened uh but thank you all so much for the support i mean it's been incredible we crossed over 7,000 subscribers and we're now well past that now thank you all so much for the support it's been record-breaking times and a times where i've barely been putting out videos which is just incredible and i cannot wait for what the future holds here fantastic truck fantastic updates and what's coming as well there's so much for me to continue covering here that i've missed and We'll just move forward from here with updates to come. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.